Okay, up here on the board, ladies and gentlemen, we have pH and pH calculations. You watched uh, the video yesterday over it. So R, learning target today is to differentiate between acids and bases in terms of hydrogen ion concentration. What, what pH is, is it's actually a measurement of this hydrogen ion concentration. So that's our learning target. Our success criteria is to be able to determine the pH, the pOH, the hydrogen ion concentration, the hydroxide ion concentration. Now, if you look right here, okay, anytime we see these brackets, those brackets are meaning the concentration. So the concentration of the hydrogen ion, the concentration of the hydroxide ion. Now, the thing about the pH is that it is a logarithmic scale. So what that means is the numbers are not increasing in equal increments. For pH, we use a base value of 10. So, as I'm looking at this, down here at the bottom, it says, for example, a pH of 3 is 10 times more acidic than a pH of 4. So, if we're looking at this, and we say, okay, we just said that a pH of 3 is 10 times more than 4. Likewise, a pH of 3 is 100 times more acidic than the pH of 5. So let's look at that a little bit here and say, all right, here is a pH of 3 compared to 4. This is 10 times more acidic. So a pH of 5 also, okay, 10 times less acidic than 4. So that's where we get the 100. Okay, 10 times 10. What if we would go out here to 2? We got another 10. So what's 10 times 10 times 10? That's going to be 1,000 times more acidic. So the logarithmic scale for the pH increases by 10s. Now, it says here, similarly, a pH of 11 is 10 times more basic than a pH of 10. So, it's that way for acids, it's that way for bases. Now, since we have this pH scale, we need to talk a little bit about significant figures in pH. Now, this is the exact slide that was on the video last night, so hopefully you wrote this down, because here is where, when we get on our web assign and start doing web assign 12.2, pH sig figs are typically where we have the most problems. Look up at the top here. If we have a pH of 7.27, .27, with logarithms, you count the number of figures after the decimal point. So as I'm looking at this, I have a 2 and a 7 after the decimal point. So that tells me that there are two significant figures. Now, it's only when we have logarithms. So when is the logarithmic scale going to come into effect? When we have pH when we have pOH. That's when it comes into effect. When we have normal, so to speak, numbers, like right here, the hydrogen ion concentration, the hydroxide ion concentration, those are not logarithmic. 
Okay? So when I look at non-logarithmic numbers, I can count that number in front. So when I did this calculation, this anti-log of negative 7.27 to figure out what the hydrogen ion concentration was, I came up with this value right here. That value with two sig figs was right down there. Now, it's easy to get confused. When do I count before the decimal point? When do I not count before the decimal point? So you just have to get that in your mind. If I'm dealing with a logarithm, okay, the pH, the pOH, the number in front of the decimal does not count. So we look down here. We look down here, and I have this value right here. Is hydrogen ion concentration logarithmic? It is not. So that is three sig figs. When I do my calculation here, to calculate the pH, I come up with this value right here. So I need to have that value with three sig figs. Now, that value is pH. Is pH logarithmic? It is. So I do not count the number in front of the decimal. So what I'm going to count is this 6 right here, this 7 right here, this 5 right here. Does that 7 round that 5 up? It does, ladies and gentlemen. So that value with three sig figs is 13.67. Six with three sig figs. Like I said, typically when I see this pH, the places that we miss on the web assign the most are with significant figures. This is the square. I told you that you might want to write down, you might want to uh, copy it or print it off because it tends to help people calculate pHs. Now, somebody asked me earlier today, well, will I provide this for you on the exam? I will not. I will not provide that for you on the exam. But if you want to copy something like that onto your note card, you probably could do that. Okay. Now, I would like for you to copy this down in your notes because we are going to use this to make some calculations to start with. When I start here, I look and I say, okay, I have a pH of 1.55. Now, first thing I'm going to ask myself is pH logarithmic. It is. So how many sig figs do I have here? Two. Mental note, mental note over here, two significant figures. Now, I'm going to go back. I can calculate. I can calculate all three of these things based on given that one value. All right. So I'm going to go back here and I'm going to say, okay, I have given to me the pH. I need to find the hydrogen ion concentration. So I am going to use this right here because that's what my arrow tells me. So to calculate the pH, okay, or excuse me, the hydrogen ion concentration, I'm going to take the anti-log of the negative pH. <clears throat> well, this is fine and dandy because I know what the pH is. My pH is 1.5. Five, five, right? So now all I have to do is take the anti-log of negative 1.55. So this becomes a calculator trick now. So go ahead and take out your calculator. I got to show you how to do the anti-log. As I'm looking at my calculator, I want you to find the log button, the L-O-G button. 
Everybody found the LOG button? Mine is just to the left of the number seven. Now, once you've found the log button, I want you to find the 10x button. Mine is a second function of that very same key, the log key. Has everybody found the 10x button? That is your anti-log button. So, when I'm doing this hydrogen ion calculation, I need to take the anti-log of negative 1.55. So I'm going to hit that 10x button, and then I'm going to type in negative 1.55. And I'm going to hit enter. Once I hit enter, that gave me a value of 0 0.028838. There's some more values after, new, more digits after that, but I don't need that many. Did everybody... Get that value when you did the anti-log of negative 1.55. Now, we need to take that. We need to take that and make two sig figs. So when I do so, I'm just going to lose all these values. So now, my hydrogen ion concentration is going to be 0.028. If there would have to be a label on that, you would see that that would be a molarity, okay? That would be a molarity. My next calculation here is the PLH. So I come back to my square. I'm going to get rid of these circles, okay? And I say, all right, now I've got to find the POH. Now, I have this value. I have this value. So I could do a couple of different things. I could use that value right here, 14 minus the negative log of the hydrogen ion concentration, or I could use what I have in blue here because that's my blue caddy corner, which says the pH plus the pOH equals 14. Well, I think that's going to be pretty easy because pOH is going to be 14 minus the pH. Well, I've got the pH. I've got the pH 1.55. So when I take 14 and I subtract 1.55, it gives me a value of 12.45. Now, is that sig fig correctly? It is, because it's a logarithm. POH is a logarithm. So it only has two sig figs. That four and that five are the two sig figs. My final calculation here, the P, excuse me, the hydroxide ion concentration. Now, once again, let me erase all of this stuff here that I've previously, previously written up here. Now, I'm trying to find this. So I can go any number of ways. Since I have the pOH, I could use that. Since I have the pH, I could use that. I could use this right here, since I have the hydrogen ion concentration. So we're going to use that. The hydroxide ion concentration times the hydrogen ion concentration is equal to 1.0 times 10 to the 14th negative. So I know hydrogen ion times hydroxide ion is equal to 1.0 times 10 to the negative 14th. So what I'm going to do, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that 1.0 times 10 to the negative 14th, and I'm going to divide that by the hydrogen ion concentration. Well, I know the hydrogen ion concentration. It is 0 0.028.
So when I do my math, I take 1.0 times 10 to the negative 14th. I divide that by 0 0.028, and I come up with a value of 3.0. Five seven one times ten to the negative thirteenth. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, once again, I need to have two sig figs. Is hydroxide ion concentration logarithmic? It is not. So, can I count the number before the decimal? I can. So, what I'm going to get is that. 3.5, that 7 rounds it up. So this is going to give me 3.6 times 10 to the negative 13th. Now, if you would have done, if you would have done this one right here, ladies and gentlemen, you would have got a value that is a little bit different. And the reason that it would be a little bit different and I think what it is, when I calculated it, it would have been something like 3.5 times 10 to the negative 13th. The reason it would have been a little bit slightly off is you remember we rounded that number right there. So that's why it would leave it just a tad bit off. Now, let's look at this one here. Let's look at this one here. pH, pOH, and hydroxide ion concentration. I need to figure those three things out, and I'm given the hydrogen ion concentration. So when I come back and look and say, OK, I have this. I want to go to this. So I'm going to use the negative log of the hydrogen ion concentration. So pH is the negative log of 7.67 times 10 to the minus 5. Now, how many sig figs do I have in this number right here? How many sig figs are there? Three. So once again, mental note, Three sig figs. So when I do my math and I take the negative, hit the log button of 7.67 times 10 to the negative fifth, I get a value of 4.115 oh four, six, and a couple more digits. But I need to get this into three sig figs. How am I going to get that into three sig figs? What's my value going to be? Max? 4.115. Excellent. Because remember, that is a logarithmic value, the pH. So I don't count the value in front of the decimal. Now, pOH, once again, that's one real easy. 14 minus the pH. So if I take 14 minus 4.115, I get a value of 9.88. Five. Is that three sig figs? It is. POH is logarithmic. Now I'm going to do this one the other way, the POH. So I'm going to do this one using my, or my hydrogen oxygen concentration using my POH. So it's going to be the antilog of the negative POH. So I put that value in, type in the antilog of the negative 
1.885, and I get a value of, with three sig figs, 1.30 times 10 to the negative 10. Now, I've got one more thing that I want to show you. Copy this problem down right here. This problem is something that you will see on WebAssign. So go ahead and copy that down. I'm going to show you how to work it. The question states, calculate the hydroxide ion concentration, the POH, and the pH for the following. I have 0 0.00054 molar calcium hydroxide. Now, let me ask you this. If that calcium hydroxide dissociates okay, into its ions, how many OH minuses are we going to have? We're going to have two of them, right? So, in order to calculate my hydroxide ion concentration, I need to take that 0 0.0054 and multiply that by 2. When I do so, that gives me a value of 0 0.00108. except for the fact that I can only have two sig figs. So that's going to give me a value of 0 0.0011. Now, I've got my POH. Excuse me, I've got my hydroxide ion concentration. So I'm going to use the negative log of that concentration to give me the pOH. So negative log of 0 0.0011. That's going to give me the pOH. Negative log of 0 0.0011. Gives me a value of 2.9. Five, eight, six. How many sig figs did I have though? How many sig figs? Two of them. So my value is going to be 2.96. How am I going to get my pH? Well, I'm going to take 14 minus 2.96. And that's going to give me 11.04. So knowing my pH scale, is this going to be an acid or is this going to be a base? It's going to be a base because it's higher than, higher than 7. Excellent.